Deshaun is so damn lucky. His birthday is close to when mama gets money. She only gets all that money one time in the whole year, and his birthday is right next to it. This year, he got brand new Jordans he don't even wear. All summer, they on the top shelf, all white Jordans in the right corner of the closet, staring at me, looking down on me. I deserve them more. I'm the one who always gets it from the mail. I check them out every day for it, and I always make sure I smile when I hand it to her, and all she says is, thank you, baby. That's it? All I get is a thank you? Deshaun gets a brand new bike? Deshaun gets remote control cars? Deshaun gets brand new Jordans that he don't even wear? Why can't she get this money by my birthday? Who sends her this money? Don't they know she got two kids? Why can't they send it twice a year? Deshaun says it's from the government. The government should change. I want a new bike. I want a race car. I want some all-white joints for the first day of school. Yeah, that's right. Deshaun didn't wear those shoes all summer just to save them for the first day of school. Today, he wants to take the shortcut. Mama doesn't even like us going this way because we passed that house. Deshaun says it's a crack house, but I don't see any cracks in it. There's always people standing outside. And today, Deshaun went up to one of them. He turned to me and said, nigga, I'll buy you 30 joints. Just take your ass to school. So when school let out, I ran so fast my shoes weren't on my feet when I got in the door. I walked in and heard mama crying in the kitchen. I told her, the shine didn't go to school today. I told her, I should get the Jordans. She got up from the table, slapped me, walked into the bathroom, slammed the door. I started to cry. I run away. I run to the crack house. She don't want me anyway. I walked outside on the grass, still barefoot. And there they were, in the street. One on the side, one flat on the ground. White Jordans, a little scuffed. I grabbed them, tied them together, threw them up on the line. Sat down on the stairs, ants crawled across my toes. Ten pairs of tennis shoes hung, like, hung on the line like water droplets. Their shadows lined across my porch. Uh, I used to live in um, Los Angeles for a while. That's where I got my start at the world stage. Um, when I first moved there, um, I'd say I was there for about two weeks. There was a carnival that they had, an annual carnival, where they're now building like a metro rail station. And they used to have it there. And two years in a row, lightning struck and a child was shot at the carnival um, for uh, wearing a certain color or whatever. Um, this, the, when I had first moved there, this particular person I was shot was somebody I had seen on the street. I didn't know him or anything, but it angered me anyway because I didn't feel that he did anything to you know, warrant you know, such a short life. So anyway, I wrote this poem very, with a lot of anger. And I'm still angry. Okay. He, father's magenta colored jacket. He, hat with red skeletal frame. He, cardinal. He, cherry. He, crimson. He, rose. He, rust. He, ruby. He, and the wrong hood, homie. He, dead before empty shells tap the concrete. He, black cold death dealer. He, don't ask questions, don't care. He, loaded 357. He, royal blue shoelaces. He, Dickie's dark blue. He, blue wave cap. He, gone before empty shells tap the concrete. And we cry, we comfort, we ask questions, we hate, we keep on living, we keep on living, we keep on living. Future ancestors, sonless mothers, and bastard children. And we say they did it to King, we say they did it to Jesus, we pray for peace, we sing for freedom, escape. We say they did it to King, we say they did it to Jesus, we pray for peace, we sing for freedom, escape. We say they did it to King, we say they did it to Jesus, we pray for peace, we sing for freedom, escape. But we never ask who are they. Who are they? Because all I see is you, me, we, our, him, her, us, she, he, and you should see him too. His rose-colored glasses, his Grand Canyon smile, his mother's faith, his father's strength. Wish you could see him. This wild rose petal caught in life's wind, his voice a bell ringing passion through the ghetto, his eyes caught in the sky most of us can't even see. Wish he was your drug, wish he was hair around, feel his life explode through your bloodstream, wish he was a bullet, wish he was a hollow tip bursting inside your body creating new galaxies and universes, wish he was your friend. Wish you wrote poems about him. Wish you could see his rose-colored glasses. Wish you could see his blood-stained eye. I've clawed the page. My eraser is cracked metal. My ink pen is a thirsty cave in the palm of Death Valley. The page is ripped and delirium has seduced me into begging Satan for mercy. I need to write, but no matter how much I scratch, I can't come out the nappy. In my backyard at sunset, I'm looking at an orange glow dying behind a bush so brown and never tried to be green. I wish I could carve it into my rib cage or have it tattooed into my intestine to regurgitate encores. My tongue 
is pleading for vernacular. As alliteration teases the tip of my nostril, I thirst for the days of sitting at my keyboard and feeling like hollow tip bullets will explode from my fingers. The words are buried into late night walks where raccoons and possums give me that what the fuck are you doing outside look. Nights where I drink five Red Bulls just to stare at the ceiling. They sing to me when I'm on my scooter. Sounds like jagged bone growling against the silence. I hate my teacher. How dare she impose exercise and poetry in the same breath? She wants me to go on a walk and write a goddamn poem about it. Eloise Klein Healy, I curse the day you were born. Okay, maybe I sound crazy, but you must understand it's hard enough to write a poem that's halfway decent. But here I am in the mountains with animals that have never seen the likes of me. Walking in this dusty, dry summer air, the sand just seems to lick my shoes. Rocks feel like daggers in my soles, sometimes pebbles, little fuckers. Get inside my socks, roll around and stab my toes. Now the logical, poetic asshole will say, I can stop in the grass underneath a giant oak, taking the boulders that sit on a cliff above my head that look like dinosaur toenails, transcribe the sun cast on a cliff beneath me, a valley full of grass, and an endless choir of trees singing the weary yacht of my tired body into a long stretch, the kind that gets the blood moving. I could sit in the muddy clay after this walk and pray my body into a sweaty meditation where I reflect on my climb up a steep hill where the world bent to the stairs of my straining muscles, but you know what? Before I could even get my first word, my leg would start to itch. Then I'd notice a refugee camp of ants hijacking a piece of bacon no bigger than my fingernail, which would require a good arm stretch for at least three to five minutes. At which point, a fly, as if it were laser guided to my forehead, will hit me right between the eyes while his comrade buzzes a Tommy gun by my ear. In this moment of supposed poetic triumph where nature and me are going to blend into my notebook, I will be a roaring bear, screaming at the flies, stumping on the ants, rolling down the cliff. Get this goddamn nature off of me! Okay, so now you're thinking, wow, he is a nut. Or maybe some of you jokes think you can sympathize with me. Jadessa has really only the scenery that has hindered the effect of this walk. Maybe the different area walk could be quite rewarding to my poetic growth. You misguided souls, I feel most sorry for you. I walked down Crenshaw at about 3 p.m. on a Saturday. I've taken a maximum, this will be like before the election. I take a maximum of 25 steps. I've already been offered two Laker t-shirts and a nickel bag. Obama is Jesus. Then when I start staring at these rolled up saran wrap shorts, damn near tattooed on chocolate thighs, this old flower dressed Jehovah's Witness gives me that look that makes me stop looking. I pass five hair shops, barber shops, wig shops, then this makeshift religious cult invades any poem that could have been written. Three dreadlock kente cloth scholars with a microphone under a green duct tape tent prophesying the white man is going to have us revert back to cannibal in the next 20 years. To be honest, with all the chocolate thighs walking around, I think I'm closer to eating the leg than writing a poem. Again, Mr. Poetic Asshole will suggest, I enhance my soul into the sticky concrete and become a nickel bag of Laker t-shirts and kente scholar and tell the kids if you want to get high, it's Obama 08 rolled up into a fatty of dreadlocks and Jehovah's flower dresses. Just thinking about it gives me the munchies and gets me tired. About as tired as a standing heart rate of 135 beats per minute. Just last summer, a month in the hospital kept me breathing, but it didn't give me back my life. Nope, it was just getting out of bed. The first day when I could take a shower without my mother's hands and put on my socks. It was the day I was alone in my house and I opened the door to my backyard, cried myself into a circle, and took three steps without my walker. Black eye pea juice ran into my thicket of peach fuzz. Grandma's barbecue sauce baptized the light skin of my fingertips. And the blue light of winter evening, just before the crimson screams of sirens rain on the ghetto's asphalt. A man in worn down haraches pushing a shopping cart <coughs> blows his horn. Elote, he shouts into the silence. He holds golden sticks of corn up against the gray evening sky drenched in mayo and butter. A vine of gold and ivory pulls at my wrist. Sunday morning, the male chaparrado precede church bells. My unbrushed teeth will slice into the burn marks on my tongue hot mushiness, all of it gone in three bites, quicker than the few dreams I can remember, like the one where we were all hummingbirds and each wing had its own love song. Our feathers, our feathers rippled against the closeness of our breath, our tongues willingly sacrificed into the volcanoes of our existence. <laughs>